Blood on My Hands was kind of one of the later tracks that we wrote on the record, right? Mm -hmm. It came from a song that we'd been jamming for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, it was like the first song we kind of jammed. Well, yeah, one of the first songs we started jamming in the writing process. But yeah, it, came, it, ca it actually came together really quick. I remember we jammed it out in, we, what were we? Were we at NRG? Energy, yeah. yeah. We were at NRG, and I think that it, the song came together in about 15 minutes. Empty With You is just one of those songs that comes out of nowhere and hits you in the face. It's just like, it was just right there for us. We started jamming it and it just came together and the lyrics and the melody came so easy. It felt so right. Born to Quit was started from like a kind of a Black Sabbath-y riff that I'd been playing on the piano. The boom, boom, then from there it developed into a song. Kissing You Goodbye came from just a, a piano idea that I've been messing around with for like a year and it seemed like when we got in the studio and, and jammed it out it came together really quick. Yeah, I don't know. From what I remember. Kind of demoed it almost all the way, it just, that was... Did you record the piano in, at the layer or did you record it somewhere else? I recorded the piano at the layer. Nice. And if you listen to the track there's a lot of little like, I mean the piano that I recorded it on is pretty shitty and there was a, uh, like the D was sticking. So I think that you can kind of, that you, I, I can hear it. Can you hear a sticky D? <laughs> Those sticky Ds. Oh yeah, that's a really cool that's part. Cool. If you listen in the oh, second yeah. verse, we did like some Jason <laughs> horror movie backup vocals. You can hear like a. Headphones on you. Yeah, it's cool. So my soul. That's a, that's a, that's kind of not one of those ones. It's just like kind of right there. No, that one we, <laughs> that one Dan and I had. It was on a, just a tape. That was all that was. Oh yeah, and I remember. It was called Quinn Dan for oh, whatever. Oh, Quinn yeah. Dan, and yeah, that's right. We dismantled it, and we just we all jammed it at the lair, and then and pieced it back together, and then we wrote like the whole other part yeah. separately, like in San Diego, or. Yep. I'm the one I wrote the beginning drums. Yeah, I remember you I wrote like, the drums. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Remember? Yeah, I was like doo -doo 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 -doo. on yeah, the yeah. keyboard, and you're like, that was cool. That was it. Oh yeah, because we did come up with that part oh, later. Dan the did, song, right? the song needed something, and we kind of came up with this cool intro. Even after that, we put the piano intro on there. Oh yeah, all that's the, true. All the all like all like the fade fade out stuff in the end. Which one's watered down? I don't remember any 80s, 50s, oh, dude, 80s, 90s. Dude, I I I, I can see what this is, dude. Quinn and I were driving, and uh, that song came on. Uh, Chelsea's on a vacation tomorrow. And then there's the bridge part. So, do, 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 crap, do. And I'm like, dude, we need to fucking write the song with that in it. Because, dude, it is so 80s and it is so 50s. That's the only thing that I, I like calling it 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. yes. But no, yeah, dude. And then I think you're fucking, when you wrote the lyrics and shit. Lyrics. What is that? I love you as much as I do. Uh, I love yeah. you. Yeah. As much as I do. <laughs> was it that song? I think it was initially. On the cross, huevos. Oh, yeah. oh okay. it's called. That... We were calling it huevos for a long time. Calling it. Calling. <laughs> you should it. say the original names first every song. Okay, the original name yeah. was like what we had like Wait. Blockhouse, Huevos, Big Ass Balls, fucking Dragon Tears. That's the one that started <laughs> out as a different jam completely until the lyrics were done. Yeah, yeah, we switched that one around. And got switched the vibe. The Quavos. music kind of got got written around the melody and the song lyrics and the structure. Even the chorus changed. Initially, we had a really bright, um, major sounding chorus that was like kind of really pretty, and it turned dark. Oh, by the way, I played guitar songs. on this song. If you listen in the chorus, is the. Okay. <laughs> That's what I played. I played a guitar on quite a bit of this record. Forgot to mention. Oh, that's what it did. Yeah. It started out as a. It started out as um, that kind of dancey song. You remember? And yeah. then it got. Then you wrote the lyrics to it, but you didn't like the lyrics to the music, so you rewrote the music. Mm -hmm. No, you rewrote the lyrics. I rewrote yeah. the melody and everything. And then, the song then changed. Yeah, yeah, then we changed the music to that, so we had a different song and three different lyrics. Yep. Or maybe two. I don't know. I just lost myself. Where were we? Two different <laughs> sets of lyrics, but two different. Two different songs. Two different sets of lyrics. And we actually released, are going to release that song, the original one. Half of it. Half of it. And that's half and right. And that's not the half of it. Half of that's a lie. We should keep that song and not release it because 
What if it becomes something special in the future? Oh, it could have been something special <laughs> like, like you. you. What yeah. happened to that song, dude? It got previously unreleased. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really like it that yeah, much. It was, was kind of... <laughs> Come Undone was originally called Terrorist. Oh, yeah. Because the original vocals were I'll Be Your Lover, Terrorist. Which I still think is cool. We changed it because I think that um, I'll Be the End That You Deserve is just so much more gnarly, and the song is about you. My favorite part about that song is the outro and the end of the bridge. Dan, 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 dan. Oh, yeah. It's heavy as fuck. And if you notice the beginning of that song, we took from a terrible scene in Barcelona, like some street riot and some gunfight. What, what, block? What is it meant to die? Block yeah, house. Like block house. Wham. That was just one. That was one that we, we had. Threw together at the yeah. house, Jeff and. I think and in I. a big way, this this. The ly lyrically, this record kind of influenced everything that I did from here on out. Like, I, I think that it kind of came... That was one of the first ones that was complete. It kind of came right? from... I was inspired a little bit by the by Heath, Le Heath Ledger's death and just the whole idea of, of the fact that, <laughs> that people, um, people die on accident all the time. It's kind of shitty, you know? Never really meant to die, baby. The Best of Me is a song that Dan and Quinn wrote like three years ago, and, and when we were in the studio, you know, kind of t hashing it out and seeing what we wanted to do, I remembered that song. We had talked about it anyways, but... Yeah, it was just on the... It was, it's such a cool... I, w I mean, I wish I still had that demo, but I used to sit and listen to that demo all over and over. It's really thrash. Like, it, yeah. you know, it reminds me of, like, Acme and, like, Converge. Quicksandish. Yeah, yeah. Way. It's got a quick sandy vibe. But I wrote the lyrics to that song about something that nobody would ever know about, my own. We know, though. We know what it's about. <laughs> it's about three, four minutes. Just kidding. Sure is, and it rocks. <laughs> Secret. Come up and ask, and I'll tell you. Don't you dare. I won't, though. Best part about this song, like we said earlier, is how it ties back in. Yeah, this song has a big tie back into Kissing You Goodbye. I think it's kind of like a... A uh, kind of self-defeating song in a big way. It's kind of about like those moments we have in life where you're just more down than you possibly could be, and it's because of all these things and all these stereotypes and you know what I mean, Dan? Yeah. You'll never make it alone. All those stereotypes out there, they're all like, oh, I like stereos. <laughs> I know those guys bug me. Lands are tens. Mm. I don't like those types. I don't like those stereotypes. <laughs> I'm a monotype. <laughs> that was a dad joke. 